Thanks everyone for the last talk of the day. Um, shouldn't be too long now. So today I'm just going to talk about UX and what I find working for global brands, small brands, um, whether we like it or not, SEO is changing. And what I'm going to show you here is some strategies, what's hard to systemize for agencies and freelancers, but it's what, it, what works. Um, UX and intent is takes a lot of time to re research and it's not something you can just go to you know, Hrefs or SEMrush, print a load of keywords out and then show it on your pages. Um, SEO is well past that now. So is UX important? There's a fine line here. So SEO teams will say UX is not as, it's a UX team, it's nothing to do with SEO. SEO teams is to drive more traffic to a website. You know, you see blogs and search console traffic going up, that's our job done, tick. But the reality of it is a website is to make more money. So as SEO teams, our job is to make more money through SEO. Um, so UX is something that we need to factor in now to our strategies and we need to say to brands that, you know, we need to work on UX. If we're driving a million traffic to blogs each month and 0.1% of that is converting, it's not our job done properly that. Obviously, you know, there's a few statistics there on the board. Um, I'm not gonna read them out to you, but billions is lost every year in revenue. Um, because of poor UX. UX kills growth, so we live in a visual world now where TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, um, you know, brands like Nike, uh, Under Armour, they have great websites and you know, we don't need to understand that if someone goes to a website and it's a shite UX, they're gonna leave, they're gonna bounce and they're gonna go to a competitor and you've lost that customer, you've lost the money and you've lost the lifetime acquisition. Um, you know, it doesn't take a scientist to work that out in 2023. So what is great UX? Um, I still go to a lot of websites where it's just bad, it's bad. And I think brands don't understand what good UX is. They'll, they'll hire a PPC team or they'll hire an SEO team and say, you know, we'll give you 5K a month, get some traffic to our website. And it's like, well, have you done the fundamentals? Have you worked on UX? Have, have you worked on your website structure? Um, have you organized your website? Have you worked on CTAs? There's a lot you can be doing here. Is, is driving traffic now the right move for your brand? Personally, I've lost, I don't know, a lot of money because I've turned away a lot of brands in the last four years where I'm not just going to take on a campaign and say, you know, I'm going to take your money each month and I'm going to drive a load of blog traffic because it's not SEO. It's bad for me and it's bad for you and it's not going to help your brand. You're going to get 12 months down the line, you've lost a lot of money um, and you're still in the same place where we are now. So <laughs> UX, obviously, increases engagement. Again, I go back to the point where if you go to a website and it's shit, you're gonna bounce and you're probably not gonna to go to that website again. It's untrustworthy. You know when a brand invests into the website, there's just something magnetic about it. You'll stick, you'll click around, you'll get that engagement. You'll get signals to Google um, and obviously, you know, you more than likely get the conversion if everything's right. Benefits of a juicy UX, I just mentioned then, is CTR. So if a user, a thousand customers are coming to your page, you know, we want them engaging. Um, the ultimate sort of goal with any brand is always conversion, SEO teams is conversion, but we want micro conversion. So we want customers coming in, we want them engaging with buttons, we want them clicking through your articles, comparison pages, product pages, looking at accordions, looking at your videos. There's so much micro conversion that, ha that can happen through your website, but it's always focused on that conversion. Um, so. It's something that, again, you know, as SEO teams, we need to sort of factor in now to say to brands, actually, we need to work on micro conversions. You know, we're getting all this traffic coming in. Why don't we focus on trying to get an extra 10% of that to the next page um, and focus on getting that top level conversion? So working the UX pillars, I'm not gonna talk about site speed. You know, if you've got a ship site, this load, it takes 10 seconds to load, no one's gonna convert. What I'm going to talk about is information architecture, how to structure a page, um, and what you can do to get to the top of Google and get the conversions. So this is where we'll start to dig into it a bit now, where we see websites uh, generally, we focus on content clusters, where we'll say, for example, I'm going to talk about electric cars today and cars. So you'll, you'll go to HRS, it, you'll get a keyword, electric cars. You'll say, right, that's one page, electric cars, benefits of electric cars, that's another page, but it's not really the intent. You're trying to match a keyword to a page on what a tool has shown you. 
what you need to understand is what is the actual intent behind that keyword? What is the intent of the customer? If we get a million people coming into one page for electric cars, there's gonna be different intents. For example, you know, if you wanted to buy electric car, if you wanted to buy one, if you wanted to buy one, we'd all have different intents. I wanna know, am I gonna get from here to Bolton without my battery running out? That's, you know, that's the reality of it. So there's so many intents and that's what we need to do to build websites and match that. So I'm gonna take you through what, what works now. Uh, this 100% works. I've tested it, the biggest brands use it and it's the hardest SEO strategy, but it's the one that works. So first intent wrapping. So I'm gonna go back to then, you know, if a million people come to a page around electric cars, there's gonna be slightly different intents. And how you show Google, how you structure them intents is how you will get to the top because brands are not investing into this. It takes, how it works is so, I'm not calling SEO agencies, but they will generally bill a client on hours. Now, for you to go and research Google and spend seven hours looking at different intents, how do you build that to a client to say, we spent time thinking, we're building you seven hours of thinking. It's a research phase that's not tangible, um, but again, you know, it's what's needed now in 2023. So using search intent, Google understands more about products than anyone in this room. So if we all set a website up today and we all sold electric cars, you know, Google knows more about them electric cars than any of us, even if we researched it quick, because um, Google has a you know, sh um, product shopping graph, so they know everything there is to know. So you know, I, might I might build a page, you build a page, I build links, you build links. Like, who ranks? It's one who matches the intent and puts the right attributes on that page. So now we start to dig in, looking at intent, where <laughs> so for example, uh, running trainers, I put a LinkedIn post about this yesterday. So Google low key there is using that as a, like a sub navigation. So if you search for running trainers, you'll often see them site link. But once you start to dig into it now, you'll notice that they're actually like a sub, nav sub navigation on the SERP. So that's Google saying, right, off this top level query, we've got this sub navigation here but is our brand using that? You know, again, if you go back to HRS or SEMrush, you'll take them keywords, 120,000 keywords, you'll put them into spreadsheets, you'll put them into a cluster tool, you'll get a headache, you'll give the sheet to someone else, and your strategy will be shit. But if you actually go and spend time auditing the SERP to understand, you know, Google's showing exactly what we need as a brand to rank. If we want to rank for running trainers, everything is there for Google to show us what we need to do to rank. So again, looking at intent, if we have the wrong intent, we're not gonna rank. Google, again, understands what the intent behind any keyword is. If we don't have that intent, we're gonna struggle to rank. We can go and buy backlinks, we can go and use ChatGPT, create a load of content. We're not, we're not gonna rank because it's not the right intent. Again, I go back to, so the SERP, this is where, again, top level here. You can't really see it, but looking at cars, so car finance, electric car finance, if you type that query in, export all that data into Sheets, you'll have a list of URLs, you have, um, use SEO Minion, you can download the FAQs, people also ask, um, and then you can start to build that data set. That's just one query. You do that 20 times with the related queries, you've got a data set then of what Google is telling you about the intent, and that's how you're gonna build. I'm not gonna talk about entities as much, but this, this is an example now, so I'm gonna talk, start talking about electric cars. Um, I had a friend who worked at a car finance place, one of the biggest in the UK. Now, obviously this is a third, third party metric tool with traffic, but they focused on UX, UX journey and customer journey. They didn't do SEO, but they got the rocket growth. Obviously they've got 26 referring domains, which is not much. Um, I think we'll all agree, you know, 26 domains is, it could be from Forbes, but there's not many there. But what they focused on was UX and that intent. They mastered that. They mastered the CTAs of the website, they mastered the customer journey, and they popped to the top of Google because it's, it's what Google wants. They don't want a website that just builds pages off keywords, pushes links to it, and then pushes a lot of content clusters. It's, it's old SEO, and it's, um, it's not the way forward. So using, this is well, give an example now. 
So these are multi-intent hubs, I like to call them. Well, there's two examples here. So this is Barley Holidays and this is the electric car. So when you go to the SERP and you search for electric cars, you'll get a similar page in a sort of different style where the, you know, Google is showing you um, FAQs. It's showing you different brands. It's showing you different models. Um, and it's building out that hub. So this is what's hard. This is what's hard in SEO to go to a brand. I'm helping um, one of the biggest computer brands in the world at the moment, not to name drop for anything, but I can't get anything done. They won't change what I'm telling them because the team's so fixed. You know, they, they've got development teams. They can't accommodate my changes. There's flies in here. <laughs> uh, they can't accommodate the changes, but small to medium brands were, as SEO teams, we have that flexibility to come in and say, right, you know, we need to build this page. This is what the SERP's showing us. When we're going to pop to the top of Google, I mentioned there about passage ranking. So the other year, Google released that update where the understand sections of web pages, where you'll search, like the snippets now, so you'll search for our best running trainers and you'll get a snippet at the top because they understand the page. So what this means is Google's understanding the different intents within pages. So we talk a lot about reducing click depth, um, you know, don't have open pages. With one click though, there's a great book, Don't Make Me Think. With one click to this page, it covers every single different intent. So if everyone in this room wants an electric car, it give us all. There's guides on there, there's brands, there's FAQs, um, there's everything we need to know about an electric car. That's one click. The second click, that can be matched to the intent. And that's good SEO. That's how you get to the top of Google, by helping customers and matching every single intent on one page. The better you can do that, the quicker you get to the top of Google. So slicing the page, um, this is where you, know, you start to build your HTML. Another example, so if you go to Google, um, do it later when you finish here, search for electric cars, and you have that little carousel at the top. So I think, uh, I can't remember the name, HTML, there's actually software you can pick at like 10 or a month. And you can build that carousel into your website. I can use it because that's what Google knows is a solid feature. So if Google's using it, IKEA's using it, Nike's using it, we know it's going to be a good feature. So this is where you start to break your page up now and sh feed um, Google the data. So if you have a section on your page, for example, guides, you know, Google's going to understand that HTML, understands links, you know, understands internal anchors, and it understands that section of HTML there where you're basically saying, this is, this is what we want to rank for here, this is what it is. And then you have another section where you have your reviews. Google understands that's a review section. You have another section which is FAQs. Google's going to understand that. And then all of a sudden you've got this page of absolute value for any customer that comes in. So planning your multi-intent hub. Um, this, is, this is the hard part of going to Google and spending time auditing SERPs, um, extracting that data. But you know, in five hours you've got so much valuable live data that Google is giving you for free. You don't have to pay for any tool for this. You can use SEO Minion, scrape all that data, throw it into your sheet, and you've got exactly what Google is looking for. I mentioned about research plan, action, conversion, a feedback loop because intents change. Um, for example, you know, if Ronaldo used a certain brand of electric car, that intent's gonna gradually change um, because it, it changes what people are looking for in certain markets. So. As intent changes, you adapt your hubs. You'll notice, um, because of the Wayback Machine, and you'll notice you know, brands um, change their pages and they adapt to what the market is looking for. Used intents, I'm not gonna go too much intents, it's, it's quite boring, um, but it's how the web works. So again, this is electric cars, Google showing exactly what they think is relevant to that search. So if it was my website, I was selling electric cars, you know, I have 1,000%, make sure I mention these entities. If I have a page on Tesla, that would be another multi-intent hub page on that Tesla page where I'd have guides around FAQs. About 15 minutes went quick. <laughs> so again, looking at electric cars, going to the bottom of the SERP, we start to see cheap, uh, UK, sale, SUV, used, lease. What does that mean? You'll know yourself, you know, you work with a brand and you'll see these at the bottom and there's no mention of them on the website. There's no supports. These are your supports here. 
Again, that's free data what Google is showing us. There should be on the pages. Look for fresh page jump. You can't see this page, but um, I think it's actually Cinch. Um, not a strong domain, but what they've done again after this, go and have a look. They built a good customer section page, um, multi intent hub, where they're matching all them different queries, and that's how you, know, you get to the top of Google. Again, this is uh, just using HRS. Um, you can check Wayback Machine. So go to HRS, put in your target keyword, look what brand has popped up, look who's climbing fast, and then go and analyze that page, take it to the Wayback Machine. It will show you what changes they've done periodically. So you can look at like 12 months ago, six months ago, two years ago. And they've obviously done something right there. They've done something where they've popped to the top of Google. So go and find out what they do it, re-engineer it, take that strategy and do it better. I have to mention IKEA, um, just because th the strategy's done so well and they've mastered multi search intent. I know nothing about sofas, but if I search sofa and go to IKEA, I know that page is going to help me out. And then when I do want to buy a sofa, I 100% go back to that page um, because it's of value. Do for one minute there. Again, intent topical hubs. Get out of the mindset of just using pages, queries. Start looking customer intent hub. If you have 30 pages on your website, your e-commerce site, you know, just Shopify custom pages. Don't, don't really focus on collections. Create custom pages. That's how you'll get to the top. I'm going to rush through it now. Tracking your X is important. This is what's um, hard with SEO teams. I work for myself, so on a Saturday night, I can put an Oasis album on. I can work at 12 o'clock at night. You know, I, I don't really bill clients for the hours. Mine's off value. So for SEO teams, I'd suggest building systems to say, right, as a core level, we're going to do a bit of heat tracking to understand are our multi-intent hub pages working um, and explain that to the clients. Every brand that I've helped this way, it's worked and they've never known about it. So they don't understand it. I create loom videos and, and tell you, you know, this is what it is, this is why. And they always think it's an amazing idea, but they don't know because they don't know what they don't know. It's almost a learning education to go to a client and say, this is what we need to build and this is why. GA4 for tracking. Um, <sighs> It's shit, uh, the industry hates the tool. We can all agree that. Um, but you can track content clusters in it. You know, you can start to track micro conversions within it. I'm not even gonna talk about it. <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned it. Um, heat mapping is, is a big one for me. Um, you know, it's Microsoft Clarity, it's free. You can put it on your page. You can see, you know, there's a certain section, if no one's going there, it's not a, a section of value. Strip out the HTML, put something else in. Obviously, keep it relevant to what the search is, what Google is showing you. Um, but you just use heat tracking. It's a free tool. Build a client. Say, we're going to spend two hours looking at your heat mapping because um, we want to build out more in engagement on them pages. Uh, to recap, <laughs> the, the big thing now, obviously, we all know AI, chat GPT. Everyone's throwing a load of content at the website, but no one's really focusing on customer journeys, um, looking at Google, looking at their multi-intent hubs, and that's how you're going to cut out all the noise of shit brands who was just flooding the website with poor content. Um, and you know, you, you'll rise to the top against all that. Resources, <laughs> I put this one on. So online articles, easy. Google patents, hard. Google patent, there's so much knowledge in that. You know, you can spend a bit of time looking at passage ranking, how they rank pages. Um, but yeah. To whatever you want to learn it, but again, just looking at, trying to look different for what every other brand's doing. Um, look at IKEA's page after this, search for sofa, and then go and look at the other pages, and you'll notice, why should another brand be above IKEA for sofa when no other brand is as good? Same with electric cars, go to Auto Trader. Like, if a brand comes to you today and says, we want to rank our collection page, here's 10,000 pound a month, it's like, you don't deserve to be at the top because your page doesn't match what customers are looking for. We, you know, everyone in this room, we all went looking at electric cars. I go back to it and say, you know, we've all got different intents. We don't want to be searching through um, page 47 on your collection page or, you know, constant scrolls. We want to know within three seconds where, where I can get that information. Um, am I consultant? Um, work with global brands. I don't even want to sell myself. I'm just talking about my mission here. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Any questions?